David Axelrod, the senior advisor to the Obama campaign, who happens to have been our inaugural guest on this show months ago. David, thanks for joining us. Great to be back, Jerry. Thanks, appreciate it. So let's look at, at that final weekend and, and, and the uh, final days before the voting actually begins. What are you going to be looking for? What should we be watching as we reach that stretch run, David? Well, I think you're just going to see a lot of activity, particularly in these uh, battleground states. I think what we've seen in the last uh, 48 hours is a kind of break glass uh, moment in Boston where uh, there's a recognition that, uh, you know, we're, e we're even or ahead in uh, uh, virtually every one of these battleground states. And so you see them investing heavily on flyers in, in, in states like Michigan and Minnesota and Pennsylvania, and also running these very, very uh, controversial ads and Ohio on cars, uh, which have been roundly denounced as uh, untrue, and then uh, ads in Pennsylvania that go back to the discredited welfare uh, arguments of the summer. So, uh, you know, I, I would watch for these signs of uh, tension and uh, desperation on the other side. I, I think they recognize where they are and they know it's not good enough. You know, the October surprise, I guess, that we've had this year was a Superstorm Sandy. What do you think its impact is going to be ultimately? You know, it's hard to measure, Jerry, and I think before I answer that, I should note that there are bigger things uh, at stake relative to that storm. Fifty people lost their lives, uh, fifty billion dollars in uh, loss of property. Uh, it's a terrible, it's a terrible disaster, and uh, so you know, it, it, it's a little crass to engage in the kind of political calculation, and I really don't know. Uh, uh, how that all nets out, but what I do know is that it probably uh, pushed politics aside for many voters in this country who were focused on uh, uh, on the uh, the storm and its impacts. And so, in a sense, it took three days off the board in the final week of the campaign. Has it had an impact, though, on early voting in any states that are really important to you guys? No, I mean uh, mo the, the states that were in the path of the storm. Uh, are not big early voting states. It touched on eastern Ohio, uh, but the impacts don't seem to be uh, great there. We continue to be uh, very, very uh, excited about what we see in early voting uh, in states where there is heavy early voting in, in Florida and Ohio, uh, in, uh, certainly in Nevada and Iowa uh, and Colorado. Uh, you know, the early returns are, are, are very, very encouraging for us. We're hitting and exceeding our targets, uh, and we believe we're going to go into Election Day in many of those states with a very, very strong lead. Nevada, for example, uh, you know, 70 percent will have voted by Election Day. We think we're going to go in there with a big lead. In Iowa, 50 percent, 45 to 50 will have been voted by Election Day. We think we're going to go in with a big lead. We, we believe we're getting about 60 percent of that early vote based on where the ballots are uh, coming from. So uh, the storm itself uh, didn't disrupt uh, early voting to any great degree. Yeah. You, uh, you know, David, as you know uh, better than I, the Romney people think they got some momentum uh, about a month ago, particularly after that first debate. They think it continues. Is it your view that Rom Romney momentum has stopped at this point? Yes, I would call it fomentum, Jerry. I don't think they have momentum now, and I don't think they've had for a while. They, they, they picked up some support after the first debate. They largely picked up those Republican-leaning independents who, had, uh, who were very doubtful about Governor Romney. They got back those voters. We always ex assumed that they would. This race is exactly the race that we prepared for. We've, you and I have had many discussions uh, about the nature of this race and, uh, and that it was going to be close. Uh, but uh, as I said, the fundamentals are very good for us. Even uh, in these very close states, you look at these undecided voters, and uh, they have a more favorable opinion of the president than they do on, uh, of Governor Romney. So this notion that there's going to be some big wave at the end toward Governor Romney isn't supported by the data. Our assumptions are very much focused uh, uh, or drawn from the data that we see. There seems to be in this kind of... Uh, mystical faith that uh, it's all going to come together in the end. Uh, and I, I think they're going to be disappointed. I, I feel we're the ones who are in a strong position going into this final weekend. You know, but in that data you talked about, David, one of the things that troubles some Democrats is that the president doesn't seem to be able to get to or above that magic 50 percent mark, either nationally or in most of the battleground states. Is that something you need to worry about at this stage? 
Well, first of all, I'm not sure that that's true. You saw a bunch of polls come out this morning. Uh, Quinnipiac uh, in Ohio had them at uh, 50. I believe we were at 50 uh, in Florida in that poll. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I, I think that um, I think that we're hitting the marks we need to hit. And uh, again, uh, you know, in almost all of these polls, we're, we're in the, you know, 49 to 51 range in these uh, in many of these battleground states. And uh, there's nothing that would suggest that all the rest of the remaining vote, and there's not that much of it, will uh, go to Governor Romney. I don't believe that's going to happen. So uh, I'm not uh, overly concerned about that at all. Yeah. You, you know, Dave, let's step back for just a second. You, you know, you've been around these campaigns a long time. I have also. Um, has anything surprised you about this year and this campaign? Anything you didn't anticipate? Well, there are always things, you know, the one thing that you learn when you are, have been around campaigns for a long time is to anticipate the unanticipated. And, you know, we've seen developments in this campaign, and certainly the storm would uh, count as one of those that you just couldn't, uh, you couldn't predict. And so, you know, what you do as a campaign is uh, you try and prepare for those things you can prepare for uh, and plot those out. And then, uh, you know, and then you have to be agile in dealing with the things that come up that, uh, that you don't uh, count on. I mean, I could say uh, there's some surprising elements to uh, the strategy that they've employed uh, that I found surprising this week. Uh, you know, I thought it was surprising that they would go back to the auto issue in Ohio and try and rewrite history this late in the game and reinvigorate that whole debate about how Romney uh, said let Detroit go bankrupt and what his position was on the bailout. Uh, and then to, you know, kind of construct this apocryphal notion that uh, jobs were going to be shipped from Ohio to China, uh, which the car companies uh, you know, hit very, very hard. That was surprising to me, but it does suggest that uh, there is a sense of desperation there. They know where they are in Ohio, and they felt that they had to try and diffuse what is a very strong argument for the president. One in eight auto jobs, in, uh, one in eight jobs in Ohio uh, flow from the auto industry. Uh, so the president's actions there are very well regarded. Uh, and so they obviously felt they had to act on it. But that was one that I wouldn't have predicted. Yeah. You, you know, one of the other critiques uh, of, of your approach has been that you guys came too late to the table with uh, an agenda for a second term agenda. Uh, is, did you uh, did you adjust at the end or was that uh, did that play out the way you had always anticipated? The uh, the agenda that uh, we uh, sent in printed form to four or five million voters was on our website for uh, some time. And it's the agenda the president's been talking about throughout this campaign. It has to do with how we build the best education system in the world, how we build uh, a, an energy uh, uh, mix for the future that allows us to control our own energy and dominate the energy sources of the future. It goes to how we deal with the deficit uh, in, a, in a balanced way. Uh, you know, these are things that we've been talking about uh, throughout the campaign, but we thought at the end when there were this, this small group of uh, undecided voters that it would be a good thing to put in their hands uh, a printed version of this uh, of this plan, so they could see it and compare it uh, to Governor Romney's. And Governor Romney's is, you know, just to extend the car analogy. When you lift up the hood, there's nothing there but a tax cut for the wealthy and uh, and deregulation of Wall Street. Neither of which is a prescription for the kind of economy we need. Uh, we saw that in the last decade. David, finally, and, and obviously most importantly, if I understand it correctly, you went on TV this week and said that if <laughs> Mitt Romney wins Pennsylvania, Minnesota, or Michigan, you will go on TV and shave your mustache. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. And I know as someone who has uh, facial hair yourself, you can appreciate what a major wager that was. Uh, I've had this I, mustache for 40 years. So it is, uh, you can take it as an absolute sign of confidence. Uh, that we are going to carry those states. All right, and I will pledge here that I will not shave my facial hair no matter what happens on November 6th. <laughs> good, so. good for you. That a boy. <laughs> All right. All right, well, thanks for taking some time in a, in a very busy stretch run, uh, David. Uh, hope to talk to you on the other side. Look forward to it, Jerry. Thank you.